Jonathan Gullis is Conservative MP for Stoke-on-Trent North and he joins me now. Jonathan, very good evening to you. Who is to blame for this dispute? Because some people are saying it's the unions, and I'm sure you you will do so. Some people are saying, well, the employers haven't shown any degree of flexibility at all. Others are blaming the government for not becoming involved. Well, evening, Ian. Pleasure to be on your show for the first time. Um, I personally, yeah, do blame the trade unions because, and I say this as someone who was actually trade union representative in the schools for three years myself at the NASUWT, what you don't do is ballot for strike action and say you're going to go on strike before you even sat around the table to have a discussion. That's not a responsible way a trade union should ever behave. Whenever we had disputes in any schools I worked in, I sat down with head teachers, had that discussion, made concessions on both sides, of course, and come to an ultimate agreement. What we're seeing is a very aggressive uh, set of actions that are going to mean that people miss out on hospital appointments, kids could, uh, and university students will miss out on their exams, impacting their futures, a massive cost to the economy, in a time, as you say, of cost of living uh, crisis, as well as obviously not building sympathy uh, with those rail workers who ultimately require passengers to sit on trains to keep them running, but will drive more people to using their car. And in an era when we're desperately trying to get more people to use public transport to help drive down carbon emissions, I just don't think this is a responsible way to go about it. But as a former trade union representative, you will then presumably understand why the union is arguing for an inflation-proof pay deal, because otherwise their members will lose out, lose out because their pay will be cut in real terms. So surely you would support that? Trade unions are there to offer legal protection uh, for their workers, to obviously do health and safety, and yes, fight for workers' pay and rights as well. But what trade unionists should also be aware of is that this is a global cost of living challenge and yes inflation is of course high and that is a concern for everyone but if we whacked it up at 11 percent that cost has got to be passed on down the line where is that money coming from for that cost these trade unions well, have actually it, had it their could, jobs it you know, could it could come out of the rail company's profits because most of them are making very big profits at the moment Rail companies have been making profits, let's not forget, because actually what happened under the coronavirus regulations is that we were bailing out this industry when passenger numbers drastically fell, and numbers are actually still 25% below what they were pre-pandemic, to the tune of £16 billion, £600 pounds per household. Or so why are these companies allowed to make such profits then? Well, at the end of the day, let's, let's not forget that the profits that the uh, unions are pushing are actually not factually correct. I'm led to believe it's around about £140 million pounds across uh, all those industries. Obviously, those companies will invest in their rail network, obviously, and re when we've got restoring your railways, for example, as a government initiative, and we're going to need match funding or part funding from rail networks, as well as improving railway stations from transforming cities' funds, yeah. which would be successful, that money is needed. So Sorry to interrupt, but what about investing in staff? Because your st any company that knows what it's doing will say that your staff are your biggest asset. And if you haven't got the loyalty of your staff, and, the, the, and therefore they, they don't feel that they're being treated well, their productivity declines, and it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Staff are invested, though, in the And let's not forget what the average salary for a rail worker is, around £44,000. You know, per annum, which is much higher than the average of someone in, let's say, Soap on Trent, who's working hard on the shop floor at a time when there's huge demand for Soap on Trent's world leading ceramics, or whether they're working in the retail industry trying to increase footfall, or even working on the buses and obviously trying to improve passenger numbers there. So there has to be some reality here. And when you start seeing education unions, such as the Not Education Union, threatening to just go on strike with its teachers because they want a 12% pay increase, you know, it's just the lunacy of some of these trade union barons who want to basically push their own political agenda rather than thinking about the people right. they serve. F final question. Should Grant Chaps meet with the unions? What harm could it do? I've got no issue, and I'm sure Grant would want to meet the trade unions, but Mick Lynch needs to stop telling well, the press. Well, he's doing a good job of not, not doing with, it. He needs to make a big... Well, the, Mick Lynch needs to stop telling everyone that he doesn't want to talk to a Tory government. And rather than pushing his own party politics, I don't know, to get some uh, red flags waving behind him and get some pats on the back. Well, you're out of date on that one because he, Mick Lynch actually wrote a, a letter to Grant Shapps last Thursday, I think, asking yeah, I'm not for a today. meeting. Grant Shapps has sent a letter the day we had a debate in Parliament, which is not, you know, ironic it was of all days he decided to suddenly act on that. Yeah, it was telling broadcast media the week before that he would never talk with the Tory government. Mick Lynch is a Marxist who has no interest in anything other than trying to bring down a Conservative government because he wants to push his own political agenda. He's a waste of space and better off not in the trade union. Is that really the language that we need in a dispute like this, a waste of space? 
Well, Ian, when you've got someone who wants to bring, try and openly saying they want to basically try and bring down a country, when they're openly trying to basically make sure people can't get to hospital appointments or get to school for their exams, wanting to uh, bring crime in the country to a halt, I've got no time for people who want to play party politics okay. rather than get around the table. Uh, thank you very much indeed. That's Jonathan Gullis, Conservative MP for Stoke-on-Trent North. By the way, can I just scotch this rumour that Mick Lynch and I have never been in the same room together? <laughs> He's apparently my looky-likey, along with the, uh, with the Archbishop of York, but there we are.